everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me to uh, talk about our Migration Friendly Cities project. So, um, I'm very sorry you got me before the fashion show, but uh, I'll try my best. Um, I've been working at Coventry University for quite a long time now. Um, I was also born in this city, and I feel extremely privileged to work in an institution that has such a close relationship with uh, community organisations, local people, and our city council. And I think it's very much thanks to that great relationship that the university and the city have that we've been able to put together this fantastic, quite ambitious, but hopefully successful programme, which is following the World Health Organisation age-friendly city program and copying the success from that very well-established program operating in 500 cities across the world and seeing if it's possible to maybe create a similar framework that would support integration of migrants and refugees in our city. All right, so I'm just going to take you through uh, the context to the Migration from the Cities program. Um, and talk about what it was like designing that programme with 30 local organisations and local people. And then we're 18 months in now. So it's quite an ambitious project. It's uh, been awarded £4.3 million, which is great. But what's more important is that we very closely an analyse the success of the project to see what we can keep going in the future, um, which hopefully will be most of it. Um, so, I'm aware that we have the fantastic Timepiece app um, ladies talk today, so I don't want to go over what they've already explained, but just very quickly, we're often hearing that um, refugees and migrants are a global crisis. Well, there are 7.4 billion people in the world, 21 million of those are refugees, and 244 million are migrants. A global crisis, really? Then we hear it's a European crisis. Well, when anywhere between 50 to 70 percent of them are actually migrating to the global south, is it really a European crisis? Um, I work in the Centre for Trust, Peace and Social Relations, and we've been very uh, lucky to be awarded a 20 million pound grant to establish a south to south migration hub, specifically looking at the asset that these particular refugees and migrants fleeing to um, the South represent and what their role in addressing um, inequality, global inequality, uh, might look like in the future. <coughs> we also hear that it's a UK crisis. Quite often there's very negative terminology used in the press. We hear the word swarm, for example. Again, really, when you look at the numbers, comparatively few people come to the UK. Britain is not the first place that asylum seekers will typically seek to come to. People who are seeking asylum make up quite a small proportion of new arrivals into Britain. As we know, world events shape who we see seeking asylum. Again, uh, there's a lot of media attention focused on Syrian refugees settling here. Um, in 2015, David Cameron uh, promised to settle 20,000 refugees in the UK. Um, as of last year, we had nearly 14,000 of those um, settled here. But that's 14,000 of 12 million people who have been forcibly displaced <coughs> in Syria. So that's global, European, UK. My Friendly Cities is a West Midlands project. It's focused very heavily in Coventry, but also in Birmingham and Wolverhampton. The West Midlands has always been a space for innovation and creativity, and that is in no small part due to the diverse population that we have in the West Midlands. Um, there are over 100 languages spoken in the West Midlands. 65% of, of refugees are male, and 80%, but 80% of the female refugees face unemployment in Birmingham. We have, we had until 2018, 49,200 coming into the West Midlands, but 19,600 leaving. So what I'm trying to explain to you is, we have a rich history of migration in the West Midlands, 
It's very much part of our identity and why we are such an innovative region. But there are challenges faced day to day by refugees, asylum seekers and migrants that are coming to the West Midlands. There's also socially mixed opinions and feelings about asylum seekers, refugees and migrants that are coming to the West Midlands. And so when we were developing the proposal with the 30 organisations that make up the Coventry Migration Network, we wanted to really focus on this social aspect and why there are these mixed opinions and why there's so much negative attention given, and space given within the media to refugees and migrants in the West Midlands. And so you wouldn't ordinarily think that a makerspace at Fab Lab would be best place to address this challenge. But when we were setting up the Fab Lab, um, I was reading David Gauntlet's book about making is connecting and people don't want things done to them. People want the opportunity to be able to um, <coughs> address their own challenges. And in making, you are able to connect with people on something that's nothing related to your own identity. You're there to um, make a project, engage in making Lego. And so a type of space that um, supports that creativity, that coming together, is exactly the type of neutral space and approach that can lend itself well to supporting the integration of migrants and refugees, but also in finding new creative ways to give them the voice. Um, you'll have met some of the team from Fab Lab there here today, they're over here, and these are just photos of some of our participants on my friendly program that have been engaged in various making activities so far. So when we worked with the local migration network, um, we asked them if we were to set up this framework for testing what could be a migration facility, <coughs> what do you want in it? And the most important thing is that refugees and migrants are rest recognised for the asset that they represent. We're always talking in the media in particular about the deficit that they represent to economies, for example. But what the project, at the heart of the project, it's about showing that everybody has something to contribute to the social and economic fabric of Coventry, Birmingham, Wolverhampton and the wider West Midlands. So that's where we started. Um, another thing we wanted to make sure was that we had representation from a range of sectors. So it is a grassroots project. But if we want to develop this framework that changes policy and the way services are delivered, we still do, do need that top-down buy-in. And for that purpose, we've got three city councils at the highest level, Coventry, Wolverhampton and Birmingham. But we're working with our local community organisations who are supporting asylum seekers, refugees and migrants every day. So we have the Refugee and Migrant Centre in Birmingham and Wolverhampton, Coventry Refugee and Migrant Centre, Migrant Voice, who are based in London, but also have a base in Birmingham. Uh, migration Work. And then we also have InterServe. We applied for this funding before and we were turned down. And the reason was, they said that if you're saying employment is so important to you, where's your employer? And so InterServe are an employer that the university has worked with for a long time now. Uh, they have a strategy that aligns very well with the migration uh, theme. And so what they're doing for us is they're acting as a voice within the private sector. They have over 400 suppliers in their supply chain. They employ 80,000 people. So it's good that we have an employer representing the employer's voice within the partnership. Um, we have Coventry University, our Centre for Trust, Peace and Social Relations, Coventry University Social Enterprise, and we are also engaging with lecturers from Health and Life Science to help us deliver the programme. Um, knowing your rights is a key to being able to live well once you arrive into Coventry. And so Central England Law Centre are providing uh, Know Your Rights activities. So we're 18 months in. What have we done? Well, by the time you've got through Coventry University's uh, long process of recruiting people and you've got your staff on board and you're ready to go, um, we've been able to speed up quite quickly. We wanted to understand at the beginning of the project, um, in terms of baseline, how migrant friendly are our cities, and so we completed um, a baseline assessment. And then 
we'll go back to that at the end of the project to see if anything's changed. We've developed an employer's guide uh, for refugees and migrants to try and get over all of those questions and challenges that uh, refugees and migrants face when seeking employment. We conducted a survey of 200 employers in Coventry and that primary research has provided us with a route forward to help people get into employment. Uh, we've knocked on the doors of 2,000 people in Coventry, Wolverhampton and Birmingham to ask their opinion of their neighbours and how they socialise. Um, we're training community health champions, we have set up an upcycling furniture factory, we're running accredited courses, um, and five social enterprise uh, companies have been started and 38 social innovation projects. So there's a lot going on, but I'm just going to go into a bit more detail about what Coventry University specifically have achieved so far. So when we were developing the project, our local migration network said that there were a few areas that were really important to them. Social enterprise and grassroots innovation. I think quite a number of people are participating in European projects at the moment in the room, and so you'll be aware of how bureaucratic they are and what a nightmare they are for a small organisation who can't wait six months for their staff to be paid. And so it's a shame, but that's how it is. So we fought quite hard within the project to have uh, seed funding for grassroots projects and organisations just to try and get over that inequality. Um, we have a social innovation infrastructure, so some capital funding, uh, citizens and voices to get over those positive uh, images and stories. Um, in Coventry University is an academic institution along with all of the hundreds of thousands of others in the world, we're quite often criticised for how elitist um, research can be. And so that was really important for us to be able to um, provide qualifications in an introduction to research methods to engage local people in helping us research on the project. And then jobs and skills, it's just so important that there are so many barriers. And so we're providing practical training, but also research to look at barriers and work with employers to address them. Um, so just to give you an example, Coventry University Social Enterprises through their Evolve Training Programme have been providing uh, training and starting up a business to um, refugees, migrants and asylum seekers and um, alongside that we've been running social innovation uh, project training and mentoring and so we now have a large number of social innovation projects running as part of the programme and they are individuals, not legal entities, imagine getting that through a finance system of a large organisation, but they are individuals who know the challenges within their own specific community and have a very concrete solution to address it. So we've been able to provide these social innovation projects with uh, seed funding and we have had a number of pitch days the most recent was in March to award funding to these projects. Um, this is one example of a uh, social enterprise clothing company that's been started up already out of the project. Um, in terms of having infrastructure to support the social innovation projects or maybe a social enterprise that um, doesn't have £30,000 by expensive equipment, <coughs> uh, we've set up an upcycling furniture factory that um, our participants in the project are getting qualifications and they're learning how to upside the furniture and then they're running repair cafes for local people to repair small pieces of furniture or toys that they might have. Getting asylum seekers, refugees and migrants positive stories out in the media is so difficult. So the project has a YouTube channel but Migrant Voices, um, who have very good connections with media, The Guardian in particular, are providing uh, citizen journalist training. So they're running media labs to support people with the skills and thereafter the infrastructure they need to get their positive news stories out there. One that's quite close to my heart, because I've got 14 of them finishing and graduating tomorrow um, with the help of our Health and Life Science lecturer, Oliver, um, is Health Champions. Now, our health service struggle to get into the hardest to reach communities. 
Also, when people are newly arrived to the UK, they might be fearful that they have to pay for healthcare, or they might not be aware of the healthcare that's out there. And then quite often, we don't see those people in the health service until it's crisis. Now, who better to communicate and signpost to health services than people from their own community, family, their next door neighbour, and so we have, uh, we've trained 45 health champions now in Birmingham, Wolverhampton and Coventry, and their role specifically is to signpost to health services. Uh, citizen social scientists, um, this is an introduction to research, and so then once our citizen social scientists have gained their qualification, we can then pay them to help us evaluate the project and to go out and conduct their own research projects in their own community. <laughs> Um, again, coming back to our making and connecting theme throughout the whole project, we engage a range of different artists in helping us to work with local people to understand from their point of view through film, photography, making, what Coventry means to them. And so we're very fortunate that the Shopfront Theatre, which is a pop-up theatre in Coventry opposite IKEA, has provided, provided us with the space for these workshops to happen every four weeks, every Saturday. All of the skills that the uh, participants in the project have learned are going towards helping the wider community, and we've talked about repair cafes, um, but here's a beautiful structure that was in Coventry Cathedral during um, Refugee Week, which was made by uh, Kevin at the back over there, um, our volunteer Tony, and our volunteers <coughs> Um, from the My Friendly Cities project. And so how fantastic that they were able to build and erect such a magnificent structure um, through the support of the project. And again, it's just showing the asset that these people represent in our community. <coughs> Jobs, skills, uh, UK qualifications, it's a nightmare. So if you come to the UK, you might have been a neuroscientist, for example, but if you don't have a UK qualification or an IELTS level 5 or 6 that costs £3,000, it is very difficult to get a job. But we know that there's skills gaps out there, so we interviewed 200 local employers just to try and unpick what is going on. Um, now in Coventry, 58% of people are employed in small companies. A lot of the time, small companies don't have HR departments. And so what is going on, from the primary research, we've understood that employees are experiencing significant skills gaps. They absolutely do want to employ refugees and migrants, but they are fearful of being fined and getting the paperwork wrong. So what do we do now that we have that evidence? Well, we get InterServe back again to run an employers forum and to put that out to their own supply chain and our own companies to uh, run a workshop to explain to them the appropriate paperwork and to provide them with ongoing <coughs> training to support them to address their skills gaps through a community that has the skills but possibly not the qualifications. So just to finish up, um, Fab Lab is a digital fabrication facility that believes that making is connecting. These are all of the events that we have going on in October. We are part of a centre for social research, which is possibly unusual for quite a techie maker space. But to us, that actually is our DNA because we really believe that technology making does help us to connect and create together. Um, and so, yeah, thank you for listening to me. This is just a bit of feedback from people that we've supported. Um, yeah, any questions? No?